Hi YouTube, welcome back to WTFRC Cars. So we've got the AGFRC and this is the AGF SPV2 USB Servo Programmer. And basically this will work with all the AGFRCs that have got the little programming icon on. See if I can get you a picture of it, but basically it's a little icon, looks a bit like that. Um, I'll put a picture on it up around here somewhere so you can see what it's for. And basically this lets you plug this programmer into any of the AGFRC programmable servos and lets you set a whole bunch of parameters in the servo um, just to make it work exactly how you want in the particular RC you're going to fit it in. Um, this will also work with some of the OEM branded servos. So I believe it should also work with the ludicrous lipo servos and i think there's a number of other brands out there um, that this should work for also lets you update the firmware on the uh, servos so if you've got one of the smart servos um, it'll give other functionality in that but i will do that as a separate video because uh, this one is um, not one of the smart servos but it is programmable um, the smart ones you can swap between um, making it sort of a 360 winch servo or a normal servo and it's mainly down to the ways these use magnetic hall sensors for the positioning of the servo head uh, rather than a sort of a carbon um, variable resistor if you like that's only got a limit so these haven't they can sense where the motor is all the time um, but let's crack on with the guide and i'll show you how to get this all set up and programmed and what the various settings do Right, so, first thing you're going to want to do is go to agfrc.com. Once we get on there, you're going to want to click download. And then you're going to want this top one, uh, AGFRC program software for USB programmer. So, click download and browse to your desktop. And then if we create an AGFRC folder on this desktop, click into that and then press save so while this is downloading you're going to want to connect the um, servo to the PC and it just all you do on the normal powered servos you just plug the servo in with the grey cable to the S um, I'll try and put an overlay on, on video so you can see what I'm doing and then literally just plug the whole thing into the PC you don't have to do anything to get any more power to that servo or anything like that it'll be sufficient for what we need then once it's downloaded click show in folder and we'll minimize that so you'll get this file that will download if you double click it if you're on Windows 11 maybe on a later version of 10 as well you'll get this prompt saying Windows protected your PC click more info and then just click run anyway and then we get a software opens up and it'll tell you that it's working, it'll say that your adapter's plugged in and that your servo's plugged in. So, what do all these settings mean? Um, I've changed mine from default, so if you ever mess all these settings up and you don't know what on earth you've done, you can just press default, and then it'll reset the servo back to its factory settings. Now, travel range, that's the maximum amount of travel from one endpoint to the other that the servo will move so you can adjust this once you know it's going to take a bit of trial and error but you can make this servo absolutely perfect for your car without setting the endpoints on the transmitter servo neutral point that is just when your controller is in its central position if the servo because of the servo on using doesn't quite line up straight and you're having to move your sub trim you can dial this in to get it absolutely perfect for that RC uh, damping factor the only explanation I can think I can find for this it says servo damping so whatever servo damping is that's what that does PWM power now this is the setting that stock which is 90.2 percent this is what I've tried what I used for the testing of the servo to show the power of it and it's slightly more powerful than advertised um, what this actually does it limits the maximum power that that servo will sort of perform at 
So, why would you ever turn this down? Well, if you know that this servo pulls more amps than your BEC and it's tripping it out, you can back the power down. Um, if the servo seems too powerful for the car, you can back it down, but entirely up to you. There's plenty of reasons why you would want to use it and plenty why you'd just leave it as stock at 90.2. Um, you can ramp it all the way up to 100, uh, but seems as though the servo is more power than, powerful than it's advertised as stock. I'd just leave it where it is. Sensitivity. This is how sensitive the dead band is in the middle of the controller. Uh, so your, your neutral position, it's how basically the width of the neutral position, if that makes any sense, to what the instructions say anyway. Your overload protection. Now this is quite a nice feature, so if say you'd got this in a rock crawler and it got jammed on a rock, after 5 seconds of you holding it, it'll reduce to just below 60% power, you can set all these to whatever you want. Level 2, if at 8.2 seconds it's still jammed, it'll drop down to 47.1, 10 seconds or 10.2, it'll drop down to 31.4, uh, and this is to protect the servo and the RC. So it's not going to try and break anything and it's not going to try and cook the servo. Um, useful feature if you don't realise that the servo is jammed. Gives you enough time rather than it just 100% power and then burns the servo out. So it could save quite a lot of servos. Soft start is a nice option. Um, basically what that does when you first put the power to the RC. The servo will slowly move to its neutral position. Inversion, if you find on your particular RC you're constantly having to go on your controller and reverse it, um, you can click this, <coughs> save it to the controller and then you don't need to reverse it. Uh, Narrowband is the Futaba SR setting and Sanwa SSR is the Sanwa setting. Now if the signal is lost from the receiver but the servo still got power this is like a built-in failsafe so release does nothing at all heat position it will hold whatever position it's in and go to neutral it'll return to whatever you've set this neutral position to if you click default it'll restore to factory settings uh, UPF is for updating firmware, so if you click that it'll open a box asking you where the firmware file is. Save, so basically what we want to do, I want to try this on the Sanwa SSR setting and see if it's compatible with the Noble Pro and MB4. So I'm going to do that. Um, if you want to save this setting, you can press save. You can browse to your folder or wherever you want to keep it. Um, we can save this as SSR and then you have to put .svo on the end of it and I'll show you what it does if you don't. So if you just click save, although you see it's created a folder there, when we press open it can't see it. But if you change that file name to .svo and then you click open it can see it and load up the settings. And then finally what we want to do is write the software to the servo. So we just click write and it'll say success write parameter. So that's written to your servo. And then you can just exit out and your servo's all programmed. So let's get this back down to, uh, to studio and try it with a Noble MB4. And possibly a Noble Pro if we've got setting on that as well. Right, so pop a quick video up on how we've got this to try it out um, I'll give you the video around here somewhere or here so you can see what settings I'm trying on the uh, both the MB4 and the Noble Pro um, but basically if I get this set up in this way the only thing I can get it to do is to work but on half the travel the other half does nothing and the only way you can get it to even move slightly is to move the sub trims and everything but then you don't get full travel but the uh, fly sky controller if you go to servo frequency it's not SSR it's SFR uh, so that's a thousand hertz and I'm not sure if SSR is the same although the software did say that the servo angle will be wrong uh, 
and needs recalibrating maybe that's something you can do on sandwich controllers that you can't on the fly sky ones not sure but just for completeness let's try taking it out of this mode and popping it into the narrowband mode and see if we can get more performance that way on the fly sky gear right so this is exactly the same procedure um, but rather than select a thousand hertz you select 883 and all I've done is default settings on the servo I've deselected the uh, SSR setting and selected the narrowband and this is now running at 800 and whatever mega um, hertz polling rate and see if we can get a uh, servo on on this just to show you how ridiculously quick this thing reacts right so if we stick a servo on on it you can see how crazy quick that is to react it's literally slightest little movement and it's there straight away and you can i don't know if the camera will pick it up but if you let go of the controller the servo will actually judder the same as the uh, steering wheels vibrating side to side when it returns so yeah that is how you program it and it will work with the mb4 and the noble pro the thousand hertz setting does work but it only uses half the travel i've got to do a bit more investigating and see if that is a limitation of using a fly sky controller with this servo or whether it's a setting that the sandwa controllers have got to reset the actual angle of the servo or if it's something we can do with programming right so there we have it that's the hfrc programmer and how you plug it in how you set it up and how you set it up on the flysky mb4 and the noble pro um, you do know now what settings work what settings don't work so well and thanks again for watching wtfrc cars if you like this kind of content like and subscribe don't forget to hit the notification bell and i'll catch you guys again in the next one